Hello viewers, I am Praveen. In this course, you will quickly learn all the operating system concepts uniquely through question and answer sessions. So let's begin. Explain resource allocation technique. Resource allocation and deallocation can be done with resource table. This resource table is prepared when the system is booted. So once the resource table is prepared, when the system boots and the OS comes up, the resource table is handed over to the OS. The OS will keep updating this resource table. So the fields of this resource table are name, the resource name and the class, like the name of that particular class and the address and allocation status constructed by the boot procedure and maintained during operation. Since any part of the disk can be accessed directly, it is possible to treat different parts of the disk as independent device. Thus, the device disk 1 which you see here and disk 2 in the table are allocated differently. Could be two part of the same disk. There are two types of resource allocation strategies, the resource partitioning and pool based. In, in resource partitioning, the OS decides based on the priority which resource to allocate to each user programs, divides system resources into partition. Now example you have a 1 GB of RAM in your system. So what the OS could do in, in the resource partitioning method is it will divide this 1 GB of RAM into 1000 parts and each like of 1 MB. So every time a program comes and asking for a memory, it will allocate 1 MB to that particular program. Now the advantage of this particular system is it's very easy because it's simple to make a partition and every time some program to comes to us, it will allocate 1 MB. But the disadvantage of this is like in case if there is a program which is hardly using 10 KB of memory, even then you have just used, you have already allocated 1 MB. And in case if you have a program which requires more than 1 MB, then that program is not going to work because your space, or the space allocated by you or the resource allocated by you is 1 MB. So in the pool based approach, the OS allocates resources from the pool of resources. So anytime the program comes asking for a memory, it will give a small amount, small amount of memory. And when the program wants again, it will again approach the OS and the OS will allocate another memories. So like this, it can keep on allocating to the program. So this is the disadvantage of the system is it will have to maintain so many entries of how many times the resource has been allocated to this particular program. So let us read down now what is written here. So in the resource partitioning OS decides a priority priority which resource what resource to allocate to each user program. Divide system resources into partitions. A resource partition is a collection of resources as I explained to you. Resource table contains entries for partition, simple to implement but lacks flexibility. Now in the pool based approach, OS allocates resources from a pool of resources, consults table and allocates the resource if it is free. Less overhead of allocating and deallocating resources achieves more efficiency use of resource. So, in fact, it has more efficiency that is the main advantage of this pool based approach. 
The next is a virtual resources. Now, what is virtual resources? Virtual resources is a is a, is something like fictitious. It's like in reality, it does not ex exist. So, it's an abstract view of the resource taken by the program. Now, you have a printer, one printer, but there are ten programs running, and then the ten systems then all are connected to that same printer. They all made to feed feel like they are all connected to the same printer they are having a direct access to the printer so this is like a virtual resource supported by us through use of real resource so it is supported by the us by the use of real resource that is the printer is already really existing basically same real resource may support several virtual ones started with the use of virtual devices like a print server so that is where the, the actually the concept came up. So every program which is executing, they will give a it can give a print. Now even if the printer is not um, able to print immediately because somebody else has already given, it will put it in the pool and the program which has given the uh, print command will actually go back and it is like like it's already printed and it can keep doing what it is doing. So from the pool again it will, uh, the uh, resource pool, uh, it will, uh, the printer will, will start uh, taking from the pool and it will go on executing. One by one it will go on printing. So, but the pr program has never felt that there was only one printer. It felt, it was made to feel that like there are many printers. Provides effect of having more resources. Now, one of the major usage in the recent times is virtual memory. You would see that in every PC which is there. Now, what is this virtual memory basically? The virtual, as the name again, is a virtual, virtual resource. The virtual memory is a part of your hard disk is actually, the system is made to feel like it's, it's, uh, it's like a RAM. It's like a main memory. So if you have a, a 4 GB of RAM in your system and you have an 8 GB of programs running, like you may be having 5, 6 programs or 10 programs running. And if you have a 10 or 8 or 10 GB of program running, what, what the OS does is it will allocate some portion of the hard disk as a main memory. And the, based on the program that you are executing, it will swap that particular program from the main memory to the hard disk. So if you are using some PowerPoint, it will ensure that the PowerPoint is present in the main memory and the other programs are there in the hard disk, which is a virtual extension of the main memory, which is a virtual memory. And recently you, you have also might have come to know about the virtual machines like VMware. So you could have four VMware running on the same PC. And they could be all four different operating system. They can all use the same RAM. They will all use the same CPU. They can all use the printer. They can all use the Ethernet and all the other ports that you have. So all of these operating system which are running, which are virtual machines basically, they are all made to feel that they are independent and they are having everything complete. So this is virtual machine. A virtual machine can be allocated to, to a user. So I hope you have liked this video and if you have please liked it, please subscribe, like, share and comment and based on your comment we will be able to improve upon and give you more better in the coming days. Thank you very much for watching.